Hey guys, Joe here, and in today's video I'm taking a look at another, the third, the fourth, the fifth, whatever you want to call it, of the random reviews that I asked Daniel, Liberty Arms, Cher check them out, check them out, Cherokee them, yeah, don't you know, uh, Liberty Arms is in Harrisburg, Virginia, check them out, tell them I sent you, they'll give you a good deal on stuff like this. Uh, what I'm showing you today is actually a consignment piece brought in by a friend of the company, and it's something that he thought I would enjoy taking a look at. And I do, and I did, and it actually made me do a little bit more research. So thank you very much, Daniel. Check this place out if you want to check out some cool stuff like this. That's a pistol. It's a big-ass pistol. This is the CZ, or CZ, depending on where you live, Bren 2 556 pistol. Yeah, I know, it's stretching the word pistol, but it's just like my AR pistols and all those good stuff. This is the Czech Republic's second version of the CZ Bren. It's got a lot of upgrades and improvements from the 805, which was its predecessor, including its disassembly system, the bolt, and all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and start by taking a look at it externally. This is the pistol version with the add-on brace and the adapter plate. Normally, if you buy the pistol version, it has a flat plate on it. This has the upgrades to it which uh, does complicate the disassembly just slightly, but not by a ton. This one has the SB Tactical. I believe this is the SBA4, so it is adjustable for length of pull. It's a brace, so your arm can go in there if you have one arm, limited mobility, etc. Uh, currently, I don't need it, but who knows in the future with my nerve damage, it may become something that is necessary. This is an aluminum receiver, very heavy aluminum receiver, and a polymer carbon fiber reinforced lower on this guy. It's the 11 inch barrel and it is a pretty cool piece. It's available for sale on consignment at $1,800. Normally this gun would be about $2,100 without the brace and the adapter system. This thing would normally run you about $2,300 because it's got the actual CZ sights, not the Troy sights, and the SBA tactical brace. So you could save quite a bit of money and you get a pretty cool firearm. Uh, the cool thing, obviously, is that it is designed to take the Stanag style or Stanag form of the magwell so it will take your standard ar-15 mags even the 7.62 version does take the Stanag style so you know the ar platform 7.62 mags should work in those this was designed as a clean sheet from the military contract so this is actually something that has a lot of features that were designed into it should it be entered into more military contracts but it was also designed for export so it actually has a lot of cool stuff going for it the number one thing they did was they actually made it so that it is not a reciprocating bolt in the 805 this would reciprocate every time the gun fired and that could be a little bit off-putting especially if you're holding it like this and you're seeing this little piece of metal keep flying back at you and you got to remember in fully automatic mode that thing is cooking flying back fast and yeah so they went with a reciprocating list bolt system so basically when it's fully at the forward you can actually hear it click or you hear that noise, that's actually the handle disengaging from the bolt when it is in the fully forward position. So that is a huge thing. Second, they lost a lot of weight. It went from nearly nine pounds to roughly six-ish pounds, depending on the barrel length. This is the 11 inch barrel. Uh, so it's like 6.2 pounds, which is not terrible for a full size-ish pistol. It's weird to say it that way, but that's what it is. Comes factory with a pick rail on top. These are, again, like I said, actual CZ flip-up sights. The 805s were made by Troy. The main difference is, um, well, these guys are made in-house by CZ. So they are flip-up, so you could replace, or so you can co-witness with a red dot, and it does have a dual aperture. So you, if you want short range or long range, you would just do that, and then you have the clicky adjustable here for your aperture. Pretty easy sight system to use, and the fact that there are the original CZs are nice. Sling points here, here, 
and cutie, so that's pretty convenient to have. Uh, on the outside here, you have a shell deflector on this side. Uh, even though the gun is fully ambi, no ambi ejection port. What is this? Uh, like an AUG? Sorry, that was a joke. Uh, it does have lots of controls on here. They went to a more AR-15 style setup, so you do have a mag release here. But it's also on this side. Helps when you put the mag in the right way. It's a little bit longer, so instead of duplicating the button, you do have this paddle here. So um, if you are running it left-handed, it's easier to hit. You have a little bit more leverage. The bolt hold open, even though CZ's website says it's mirrored, it isn't. It is fully ambi, but it does also have a more AR-15 style for the bolt hold open and release. So you have your standard AR-15 style paddle. But you also, drop the mag here, have this style up in here. So you can see it's a ledge system. So let's say you're in there and you're fighting. Ow. So you can release it that way or you can lift it and lock the bolt back open. So you have options. Pretty nice to see there. Uh, your safety is back here. This is a US spec, so it doesn't quite go to the fully automatic setting, oh, but you'll live. Uh, they did a lot of design work here to lighten it up. Uh, they have available pick rail pieces. You can see it's M-Lock, and then you can add some pick rail pieces, or it looks like proprietary style with the way these bolts go through it. The grip is non-removable, but it does have a removable back strap. However, uh, you only get the one. There are no other options that are not third party. So from CZ, that is your grip. It's pretty nice, actually. I like that it's flat front. It's a little bit thin, which even though I'm a bigger dude, my hands fit comfortably on it. But I would like to actually see a little bit, little bit thicker. Like my AR-15 runs the uh, Magpul K2, which pulls your finger away just a little bit. So you can see... That if you try to finger it uh, with just the pad of the first knuckle or the first digit pad, uh, you have a little bit of an extension away from the gun in order to operate that. If you had a little bit of longer length of pull, it would actually give you a little bit more natural trigger uh, resting place. And I know Europeans are bigger people because I used to live in Germany when my dad was still in the military and the bathtubs were huge. Leave it down in the comments if you were a huge German. Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, again, not having a reciprocating bolt is a big thing, makes it for a much more comfortable shooting firearm. Moving up here, another improvement they made from the 805 to the Bren 2 is the gas system. Uh, it used to be very small and you had an indent that you had to push in just to be able to manipulate it. You no longer need to do that. You just need to be able to grab it and twist. There are multiple settings. So you have standard, harsh weather, and disconnect. It's piston driven. Uh, if you turn it off, you then have a single shot Bren. Why you would do that, not sure, but you could. This flash hider is simpler than the original version on the 805, and the twists are not just for style. Apparently, the uh, acoustics, according to uh, web sources, and Ian McCollum, Forgotten Weapons, he's so much better than me at doing some reviews because he's putting in dozens and hundreds of hours for his videos, uh, although he does have multiple millions of subscribers, so... If millions of subscribers subscribe, I'll put in that kind of time. But this actually is tuned for acoustics. So when it fires, it changed the sound. I guess originally it was either tinny or whistly, but this helps uh, attune the sound that the gun makes when it fires. It's pretty nice looking, actually. I thought it was a little bulky looking at first, but I actually kind of dig it. The difference between this and an AR-15, I thought it was bulky, but it's not really. The AR-15, this is a little bit thicker for the lower end, whereas on here, it's a little bit taller because the reciprocating, the handle is up top versus all the way on the back like it would be on an AR-15. 
Yeah, what say we pop the top off this son of a gun? Son of a gun, yes. First thing we do, make sure it's empty. Yep, we're good there. Go ahead and release that. This one, because it has a adapter on the back, does have a second pin. If it was completely flat back there, you wouldn't need it. But for this, you know, you will need to push out the pin. I like to use a mag. It is captive, so you'll need to push that out. Over here, same thing. Uh, according to what I understand, you just use the edge of the feed lip here, not the rear, because you don't want to break that, but the front. And you can push down the pin to start. And it is captive here as well. Once you've done that, then you can pull the receiver off and then pull down here, which will then allow you to take off the adapter. You see back here, if you buy it, uh, without the adapter on there, it would just be a flat plate that if you didn't have this, you wouldn't have the other pin. The pin is just uh, to ensure that you can't accidentally release it. Once you've done that, then you have access to the bolt and the recoil spring and the handle itself. I'm not going to disassemble it any further, but it is pretty simple to work on and get access to clean and field strip it. Not bad. Smells burnt. Not sure if that's just because it hasn't had many rounds put through it or if it has had a lot of rounds put through it. It's more complicated. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. This might have been from Fire Guys collection, but it didn't get burned. Either that or it's just the production makes it smell really, really burnt and crispy. Let me know if you have one of these if your gun is burnt and crispy. Not crispy, the uh, war hero but crispy as in has been in i can't continue that because he was also in the fire anyways what do you say we put her back together so you can just put this plate back in uh oh make sure your recoil spring is all the way in then you can do that pop that back in take your receiver start it back here first again if you don't have this adapter the plate will just fit in there Slap it in, there you go. Go ahead and cycle it. Make sure that you didn't screw it up. Uh, I don't think I talked about the trigger pull. It feels mil spec, probably five and a half to seven pounds. Actually, it's lighter. I'd say that's more like a four pound trigger. Very nice trigger, actually. Reset. Basically, you're out to the wall. No, this is, now that I say that, compared to a standard AR-15 trigger, this is way nicer. But yeah, that is the CZ Brand 2. It's very expensive. You're talking Daniel Defense money or high-end SIG money or Zev Technology AR-15 money. And you are giving up your standard compatibility with standard AR-15 parts. But it does wind up being a very unique style gun. And since this is easily replaceable, you could put up the style that allows for a folding stock or folding brace as opposed to just the SBA brace. Obviously, this is an AR-15 style buffer tube, so any of the AR style um, braces will work on this gun. If you have one of these, let me know how well it shoots for you. If you enjoy shooting it, I mean, it should shoot really nicely. Uh, if you are looking for one, again, it is available at Liberty Arms. It's $1,800, so uh, $300 under cost of a just standard pistol. And then when you count the adapter, the brace, and the sights, you're probably talking about a $2,250 to $2,400 pistol. So... Yeah, you can save yourself anywhere from three to six hundred dollars and get yourself a pretty nice unit. I'm out of here. It's very early or late, depending on how you look at time and space. I have to get some sleep because I have to go and meet somebody at my office in the morning. Let me know if you want to see me take one of these out to the range. Maybe next weekend we'll take this out to the range with Daniel now that ammo is available and the weather is not horrendous. So we're going to the range on Tuesday to shoot the Taurus G3 Tactical, and I need to put some rounds for my carry gun. Uh, come back for that and more videos, and don't forget to get subscribed. Use my Amazon affiliate link, and come back for the next one. So, again, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm going to get out of here. So, as always, I'll talk to you later.